Hello world. So in today's video, we'll be exploring the World Bank API. This is the first time that you've watched a video on my channel. Let me explain what I'm doing. Uh, this is the 178th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. And one of the key features I want Shane, my AI, to do is to um, look and analyze economic data for me. And I eventually want to build a website where people can look at Shane doing that. And so one of the things I wanted to check out was the World Bank API. And uh, I don't really know if I like it too much, but I did want to do a quick video of, of what I found out uh, using it and hopefully it helps somebody. Um, you have to just pip install WBG API. So if you go, if you're using PyCharm, uh, you can go to settings, go to your interpreter, whatever your project's named, and then click the plus button and search for WGB API, W World Bank. There we go. And install it. And this is a Pythonic package that helps you navigate through the requests. And so I'm going to kind of step through this in order. So what it does is it gives you a bunch of databases and, and, and you can check them out. So you can do what's called an info, right? So to see all the uh, available libraries, You can use this uh, data, so assign a variable, data equals WB, right? So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, that's standard. Uh, import WBG API as WB, that's what the namespace of the library says in the documentation. Um, we're not going to use uh, pandas in this video, but I'm going to show you kind of what you can do. Um, and then we are going to use plotly.express as PX. And so I'll show you that. So the first thing we're going to do is sign a variable data equals WB, which is the API, dot series, dot info, and then we're going to print that out. So let's check out what that looks like. And so it has these IDs, right? These uh, nomenclatures uh, for all the libraries, right? So this one dot this dot that and dot that and what this is is the mortality rate of infants per 1000 live births and so you can go into the examples and look at all the different databases that are available so that's one way to do it um, if you kind of already know what you're looking for but there are over 700 databases um, and, and you can check that I'm doing a wb.source.info, but we're not going to do that. So that's just how you check out all the um, libraries. Now to do a search, you can just um, add an argument by putting Q equals and you can search for something. So let's say we wanted to do the inflation, right? So let's look at all the databases that have inflation in the description. Okay, so there are three right here. So we have this one, this inflation, consumer prices. So the consumer price index as a percentage. And then you have these GDP deflators and then a linked series. So just different economic ways of showing inflation. So um, that's one way to do it. And once you have this, you can use it. But there's also another way to do this as well. And that is to iterate through it. Now, this is a custom object that the author of the um, WBG or WG, WBG API created. So to iterate through that, you have to um, do a dot list. So right now we have dot info searching on inflation. So to iterate through that, you just make it a dot list. And then for each ID, so let's say I just wanted to get um, 
this as a row for ID and data. We're going to print ID. And there you go. Now you have the ID by itself and the value by itself. So now where can you go from here now that you know the databases? So remember, we like this one, right? This uh, inflation consumer price. And so you can um, chart it out using matplotlib in line, right? Let me show you what I mean by that. So we're going to create a data frame using the API. So wb.data.capital data frame. Then we're going to pass it the ID that we wanted right here. Um, you have to give a country. So you can give one country or several countries by passing it as a list. So let's say I wanted to do this and then maybe Brazil like that. But let's just take a look at USA where I'm from. All right, then I want to give it a range. If not, it'll just give you the whole database. So I'm going to put 1970 to 2020. I want the index, so the x axis to be time. Numeric time keys, I want to be true. And that takes off the YR. So in all the databases, the years are YR 2000. Uh, labels, true. And then you can use this inline function right here. So dot plot. And then we're going to have the figure size as in 10 width, 6 height. And then we're just going to do a PLT, right? A matplotlib.show. And what that's doing is it's plotting this right here. So let's check this out. So what we're doing is that database, the consumer price index database as a percentage. And using the WBG API, we're going to create our own little plotlib right here. Right, so it starts at 1970 and then it goes all the way up and then you can see in like uh, 1979, 1980, we had a consumer price index over 13 and, and that um, probably inflation was close to 15, 16% at that time. And then as you can see, after the housing collapse in the USA, the consumer price index fell to almost nothing because people had a hard time selling anything. Um, so that's kind of cool, but I don't really like matplotlib now that I've had a taste of plotly. And so you can actually uh, make your own plotly thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run an interactive program that I created that will kind of show you um, what we're doing. So the same thing, we're going to do a dot list and we're going to look at inflation. Okay. And so it's going to ask me, which databases do you like, right? So we looked at inflation and it found three. Now I use option zero just to match the index. So do we want option zero, which is the inflation one? Do we want inflation, the GOP deflator or the link series GDP deflator? So I want this one, this zero, right? And I took off the ID because unless you know what you're doing, then that ID means nothing. So let's pick zero. Oops. Let's pick zero. All right, and now it's going to pause, and now it's going to create a plotly.express um, chart, which I like better because you can manipulate it. So let me move my face, and there we go. We have a much cleaner chart right here. So 1970 to 2019, it's by year. Um, and I just like this Plotly Express better because I can change this background. I can add shapes. Um, it's just cleaner. I like the Plotly a lot. Um, I've used it in other videos. And uh, you can watch that playlist by clicking here. All right, so let's go through this code. So same thing. We're going to do a dot list so we can iterate through it. I created an empty list. The choice is going to start at zero. So for each ID and data, which is exactly what we did up here when we iterated through that list, we want to get the ID title. So ID equals the ID. Remember, it's that um, weird database name like that. Then the data list append. So we're going to append all the titles in this list right here. So this one has a corresponding ID that's in this list. This one, this one. 
And then we're going to print the string of the choice. So this first one is 0, plus, and I put this little uh, semicolon in space, plus the string version of the ID value, which is this part right here. And then we're going to um, increment the choice by 1. So it prints this out. And now this isn't 0 anymore. It's 1. And then it's going to go through again. And it's going to say 2. Then we just do a um, input, a standard input, console level input. So selection equals the integer version of this input, which is please enter the number of the database you'd like to chart. And then this time, we're going to create a data frame just like we did above up here. But we're going to remove the plot part and just pass this selection, right? So that what this has is in this data list, it has 0, 1, 2. We selected 0, so it's going to find the first one in the index, which was this database right here. So in essence, that's right here. And then it's going to do a fig equals px. So that's the plotly dot express dot line. We're going to pass it this data frame. The x I just called time. The y axis I just called USA. Now when you use plotly express, the database's um, years are reversed. So your first input is actually 2018, I believe. That's the zero width index. And then it goes all the way down to 1970. So if you use the inline plot, the author might have corrected that behind the scenes. But if you use Plotly Express, you have to correct that yourself. So what you're doing is the fig, and then we're going to uh, adjust the layout, adjust the axe xe. We're going to make it an auto range, and then we're going to call it reversed. And all that does is now we're going to put 1970 in the top row in the zero width index, and we're going to end with the last value closest to 2020. And then we do a fig dot show instead of a plt.show. And that creates the Plotly Express. So um, a lot of these World Bank um, databases are empty. Um, they have NAN on them. And so let me show you an example of that one right here. So let's uh, print this data. And uh, no, I'm sorry. So let's look at, what are we going to do here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back up here to our selection right here. So this is our interactive program we just ran. And instead of inflation, let's look at aid, right? Foreign aid. That's a popular subject in America right now. So it's going to find all the databases that have aid in it. Okay, so there are 41, actually 42, because I started with the zero width index. And uh, you can look at the net bilateral aid from all these countries. Um, but let's look at this one right here. Net official aid received in current US dollars, right? In today's dollars. Um, and so let's do that. So it's number 35. So let's go back down here. Please enter the number of the database you'd like to chart. And let's do 35. All right. And so what I would like to see is the net aid of what we've given in US dollars. And it's zero. So if I were to look at this database, it would have NAN, which is the... Um, programming for no data in there. So then what you can do is you can go back to this wb.source.info and check out all the databases that are available. And then you can search for your country and find out if there's data available. So this and see what I mean, NAN. So some databases have no data or very little data. And you can correct for that, but um, it doesn't look good on a chart. So, um, and if you do chart it out, anything that has an NAN will just stop printing, like you can see in this uh, in the GitHub repository.
So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you use the World Bank in a real program, please let me know. I would love to see it. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.